Good morning everyone! Welcome to First Baptist Church Children's Sunday School Online Program. Let us worship our Lord together. to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the moment you have given us to gather and assemble online in Children's Sunday School program. Help us, Lord, in understanding your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, let's see today's story. In 2011, NASA launched a spacecraft called Juno to travel to the planet Jupiter. In 2016, it arrived and began orbiting Jupiter. By studying Jupiter, we are learning how a gas giant affects the solar system around it. It is thought that then, we will be able to understand the nature of other solar systems just by examining their gas giants. There are billions of Jupiter-like planets in our galaxy, and they are easier to observe than any of the other smaller planets. A planet that large has a significant impact on the solar system, and scientists believe that the message that come back to us can tell us how this system formed. Let's look at one small piece of what scientists are studying from the image and data being sent back to the Earth from Juno. NASA releases stunning video of Jupiter captured by Juno spacecraft. The American space agency NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory has shared a video on Instagram of the gas giant Jupiter. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory has now shared a video on Instagram that shows the gas giant Jupiter. NASA's Juno mission captured the footage during a close flyby. On April 9, it was launched 2,500 miles, 3,200 kilometers, above Jupiter. Juno's 41st flyby above Jupiter, with the spacecraft traveling at a speed of 210,000 kilometers per hour relative to the planet. That is more than seven times faster than the International Space Station's speed, ISS. NASA said in a statement that the video, in the form of an animated sequence, was created by citizen scientist Andrea Luck using the JunoCam picture data in its raw form. You and I may not be as brilliant as the NASA scientists studying the data, but we can understand they spend billions of dollars and years of waiting to get this data from space. Whether they interpret this message and apply them correctly remains to be seen. In other scientific studies, scientists gather information from various sources and compare it before they come up with a theory. Why do you think it is so important to scientists that they study Jupiter at this level? Yeah, maybe they are trying to find out how the solar system are formed and whether there is life on other planets or not. We don't have to be NASA scientists to know and understand the answers to some of life's greatest questions. God 
gave us His Word, the Bible, to help guide us as well as give us His answers to the big and small questions in life. God's Word is His message to us that provides everything we need. Let's find out more. God's Story, the Bible. So part of God's story is about the Bible, and it goes like this. The Bible is no ordinary book. It's all about God and how much He loves us. Now, you might think the Bible's a big, long list of rules and names, but it's not. You might also think it's about a bunch of perfect people who always followed God's rules. But really, the Bible is a bunch of stories, poems, letters, and even songs that are all telling one big story that have been put together into one big book. And everything in the Bible is true, like how God created the whole world and everything in it. And the story is about Jesus, God's son. And in between, there are lots of stories written by all kinds of people. But the amazing thing about the Bible is all these stories came from God. The first part of the Bible is called the Old Testament. It tells the story of God's special family, the Israelites, and how God promised that through them, he would bless the whole world. To help them do that, God gave them the Torah, or the law. These were ways for the Israelites to live differently than other nations, by welcoming people who were different from them, forgiving each other, and following God. The only problem was no one was able to follow all the rules. This is what the middle part of the Bible is about. People tried as hard as they could, but they kept making mistakes. And every time, God forgave them and promised them that someone would come, a king, a rescuer, who would actually follow all of God's rules and show us what God is like. Well, Israel waited a long time for the king, who was also the rescuer. While they were waiting, Israel had good kings and not so good kings. Sometimes the people in charge forgot about God and started to worship other gods. And sometimes they even got taken over by other countries. And whenever God would do something amazing, like when he saved three guys from a fiery furnace, or when he sent messages to prophets like Jeremiah and Ezekiel, or when ordinary people like Ruth decided to be a part of God's family, people would write it down. They wanted to remember what God had done and teach their kids what God was like. He's powerful, he's loving, and he's good. In some stories, God reminds us he's a good king, powerful and mighty, someone who saves his people from danger. In other stories, God reminds us he's a good father taking care of his children, or like a good shepherd, gently taking care of his sheep. Now that's all in the Old Testament. The next part, the New Testament, starts with four books full of stories about Jesus. Jesus is God's son, and he lived a perfect life without breaking any of God's rules. He taught people about God and showed people how to be like him by helping those who were poor and sick. Then Jesus died for our wrong choices and came back to life, which was a pretty amazing thing. It was so amazing that people made sure they wrote down the stories about Jesus. And as more and more people started following Jesus, there were more and more amazing stories to write down. Like when the Holy Spirit came down like wind on Pentecost, or when people who followed Jesus performed miracles, or even when one of Jesus' friends, John, had a crazy dream about what it will be like when Jesus comes back to rule the entire world. After Jesus came back to life and then went to heaven, yeah, that happened. People who followed Jesus wanted to put together all these stories about the law, the Israelites, Jesus, and the early church into one big book. It took a few tries before everyone agreed on what parts should be in what order, but that's how we have this big book called the Bible. Today, people still read the Bible all over the world because what was true a long time ago is still true today. God always stays the same. God still speaks to us. He forgives us and loves us, and he's always good. And when we read the Bible, we can still learn about who God is and what he's like. The Bible says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. And that's the story of the Bible. Today we learn the Bible was written long ago to be preserved for people in generations to come. God had ordinary men record his message to us. 
We also learned how important it is to talk about His Word and write it down to be remembered. Today, we are going to do that. Let us read Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. In John 14 verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 1 John 4 verse 8, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 to 8, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Let's do as Deuteronomy 6 tells us and tie God's word as symbols on our hands. Why is knowing God's word so important? Yeah, knowing God's word gives us direction in our lives, it changes us into who God wants us to be, it gives us answers to life's big questions. And what are ways we can learn God's word? We can learn God's word by having a quiet time with God each day, memorizing verses, listening to our Sunday school teachers and pastors. God sent us His Word, His message directly to us to let us know how much He loves us and how to best live our lives. His Word gives us direction. It answers the big questions and gives guidance in the details of our day. Every day better you take time to dig into the scripture God was carefully to preserve for us. Read His word, follow it, and wear it. Do whatever it takes to personally know the creator of the universe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the message that you have given us that we should always follow your words that is written in the Bible and help us Lord to be able to dig into your word every day in our life in Jesus name we pray amen so guys never forget to read the Bible every day the more you read the Bible the more you will go in Christ don't forget your memory first see you next week God bless you bye